Welcome to the channel, Inner Cosmetics. You're watching the South Africa series. This episode, you're not gonna wanna miss it. We're having an intimate discussion with the Blantons because I want to get to know this tourism team on a more personal level. So we're going to be meeting on the rooftop and I'm gonna be asking them questions like, what were their careers before they even started the real South Africa? And some other exciting things about them that I think you're gonna to wanna to hang around to hear. So I'll see you there. Cosmetics Podcast. I'm your host, Elvene, and you know who I have with me. Look at this. <laughs> I've talked about them so much on our prior episodes, and I am so honored that they're actually, yes, I have. I did. A lot of talking. So they know about you. They know about you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. appreciate that. I'm here, to I'm here to set the record straight. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Um, hold on, guys. Gotta grab my drink. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, now we're ready. So, as you guys may or may not know, on Inner Cosmetics, we're all about inspiring others, you know, to step out and lead from where they are. Okay. And you guys are the epitome of that, and I thought it would be really great for you to talk to the audience, because, okay, now you're the leading tourism company, in you know the real South Africa, South yeah. Africa tourism, but you didn't always start there, right? Not even close. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Okay, and so this is a opportunity for you to share what that looks like. Like, how do you step into your passion? You know, and mm. so could you share a little bit about what you were doing prior to the real South Africa? Well, since Mark is older, I'm gonna let him go first about what he was doing prior to us starting the company. Okay. Well, before you know, um, we started the, the real South Africa. I mean, there was a, a ebb and flow to how we got there. But before that, we actually, I was I was working for the government. I was U.S. Secret Service for 13 years or 10 years. 10 years. Something to that effect. I was doing it for like 10 years. And at the same time, you know, my wife, she's a physiotherapist or a physical therapist in the U.S. And um, so we just, you know, I hung around a lot of influential people because of my job. And so being Secret Service, you have a lot of conversation with people that you generally would never have a conversation with, ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about from the top people in business here in the United States to, I mean, some of the big government, you know, officials and so forth. And then, so when you're sitting around, you know, not doing much, you start talking. And it was always around business and stuff. And so when I told her to quit her job, I was like, quit your job. And we're going to start our own company. And that was very confident because I've had enough conversations. And I saw how they operated. I saw how they moved. They didn't operate like the average person said, I got to do this first. I got to do this first. No, they just kind of said, okay. Let me figure out how this works. Okay, now how can I make this work for me? Okay. That was their that was their thing. So that's what I did. So we we had a physiotherapy company or a physical therapy company for um, ten years okay. before um, we became the USFI. So it sounds like the um, company that you had, as well as was it like more of a fast paced type of environment? Like how? So while. Simultaneously, while he was working at the Secret Service and while we were running the practice, um, it was very busy. So, I mean, we worked from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night, um, and we saw patients every hour. Um, and I was primarily a pediatric physical therapist, so I saw most of those babies. So I'm on the floor playing for hours at a time. Um, and then eventually, um, you know, I got to the point to where it was no longer fulfilling. Okay. And I told him prior that if it ever gets to where it's not fun anymore, mm -hmm. I don't want to push, I don't want to stay there simply because I have a degree mm -hmm. or because you've worked so hard for this it, it, and it stopped being fun. So once it stopped being fun, mm -hmm. um, we decided to sell it, which we did. And then I said, um, if we can sell it before I turn 40, that'll be great. And we sold it six months before I turned 40, which was great. Okay. Um, and then eventually we moved here. And we have been toying around with the idea of, of tourism, but on a very 
small scale, mm -hmm. and then it turned into what it is right now. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I like that. So I kind of I hear following your heart, mm -hmm. and you just let go of the stress. I yeah, did. Of course. You know, I and did. were you guys traveling back and forth? South Africa during that time, like all the time. So your oh. first time? Yeah. Well, let me back it up a little yeah. bit. You know, we the answer is yes. We went back and forth. So as we were going back and forth to Africa, South Africa, we were picking up things from South Africans, like you know, the culture. Okay. You know how to interact with each other, um, business, even more stuff in business. Just. And, and what it was, what, what it really meant to be a black person in, in Africa, we were picking up things like all the time, and it wasn't like we was, we was like searching for it. They were literally bringing it to us yeah. and say, "Hey, brother, hey, brother," and they meant that. Okay, yeah. And they would, you know, break you down and show you things and, and, and talk to you. And then when you're here so much, it become it become commonplace. Like I remember a time when. I was still apprehensive, and I said the way I wanted to say it. You know, I had friends of mine that were, I would say, you know, socially, I mean, economically, maybe yeah. here, mm -hmm. and I was here. And then, because of how they operate, and there's so many of them, they move, they move in packs. Mm -hmm. And so then all of a sudden, these people were here, and I remember they were driving a Toyota Corolla, and now they're riding Porsches and things oh, wow. like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing pretty good for myself, but but there was something that held me back from getting my course. So I came back, and I was like, you know what? I'm going down to the dealership. And I went and just gave, wrote them the check, and I got my course, and I put it in my garage, like the rest of my South African friends. I love it because it's like a story of how new experiences just add to you discovering yourself and seeing what's out there. Mm -hmm. And it's like the first step you're willing to take about change. Yeah. You know, it opens you up into this new door that you're like, whoa. They know it's behind here. Well, I would say, just to add to that, that coming here gave us permission to be unapologetically black Ooh. and to yeah. and to and to want more for ourselves beyond what they told us was the quote unquote American dream. Because we had checked all the boxes. I'm talking like government gig, entrepreneur, mm. making lots of money, and, mm, we, and we were stuff. still miserable. And mm. I was like, I would come here and I'd see people who quote unquote supposedly live in the third world country and had less and their lives were way more fulfilling than mine. And I'm like, I wanted it to look like this. And the only way I knew I could get that is if I was here. So I had to literally let go of all the chains that told me you can't do anything beyond being PT and believe that we could do this. And guys, this is an example of what it looks like. It's the unknown and you're going into it. But like Natasha is saying, there's something more. It's more than chasing the dollar. You know, <laughs> after a, a time, it's like, what else is there? Right? And so when you guys came here, how did the real South Africa start? Like, well, how did that happen? <laughs> well, it was actually, it's pretty interesting because at this point, we are battle hardened, tested business people. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people don't know what that means, but we do. And so when we look at things, we look at things from a perspective of what can we do? So, you know, so I looked at this tourism space like we looked at anything when we were trying to get new insurance companies to uh, send their, their, their clients to us <laughs> when I was competing against other uh, businesses that were doing the same thing to get more clients. I just, I looked at the whole industry and I said to myself, I said, as far as black people traveling to Africa, there's nothing organized. There's no organization whatsoever. So that's why you find so many people that are, you know, if I want to go to Africa, how do I do it? Like, how do I go? What do I do? They can go, to, if, if you pop into a travel agency and want to go to Europe, there's, there's yeah, yeah it, it's set up for you and you can do it, not a problem. So you just opt for that because it's easy or to the, to the Caribbean, but there was nothing set up. So I looked at it and said, okay, there were a few little entities that were doing things in the African space. Africa is massive as far as in size. I mean, you can fly from the top, from the top of Africa to the bottom of Africa. You can fly 12 hours in a jet. And still be 12 hours. 12 hours still be in, in a jet, and you would still be on the continent of Africa. <laughs> you haven't crossed any waterways. What? The, the place is massive. massive. But, 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 again, Europe is only, uh, 
It's that big. Like an hour and a half, you don't cross the whole thing, and we're trying to get there, but we needed to come here. So I said, well, I'm very familiar with South Africa. I know how to do business. I know how to to deal with all the entities here to forge a way for us to be here. Um, because it took some forging. They didn't know who we were because us black people never came there. Mm -hmm. We don't come here. Mm -hmm. So they were like, when you guys are saying, what? You want to bring black people here? Some people was like, eh. and then some people were like, well, that's a good idea, mm -hmm. but how do we make that connect? I'm a business person. I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. So we, I looked at everything and I said, well, just, we're going to start here. And we started here and now we are um, recognized, especially here in South Africa, at pretty much most most locations, most oh, yeah. big venues, most everything as far as tourism is concerned, that a lot of, if they are interested in reaching the African American community, they reach us. Well, I know how big you guys have really grown because we were walking through the mall earlier <laughs> and, you know, people were just like, hey, you know, I'm like, oh my gracious. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, I thought that was really um, awesome. And also, too, what I heard is that when you, instead of you complaining about anything, you took your experience and you said, ooh, I'm going to make it better for the next person that's mm -hmm. coming. You know, uh, sometimes we just sit there and we don't think that we're in a position to do that. You know, yeah. and you guys, you guys did. And look what, what came of it. Yeah. Can't complain, can't complain. I think that for us, we we saw so many people that were grinding hard and deserve so much better. And I was like, there are friends of ours that I know own businesses. You know, they have they've checked all the boxes as well. And I know that they're miserable, but they won't do anything to change their environment. I mean, I'm not asking people to move to South Africa. I'm saying just come visit and then however it, South Africa moves you, then let it do that. But you're not going to find what moves you if you retire in Arizona, if you retire in Texas. You're not going to find any of that. And I'm not saying that you no, you won't find it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mince words. You, you're not gonna find it because what you're looking for, I promise you, on a lot of levels, wherever you want to get in in South Africa, you can fit in, and you will find exactly what you're looking for. It will literally come to you Ooh. once you get here. It makes sense. I mean, I love a that. lot of people network quickly. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Just like that. And they're like, Just I like couldn't that. get any of this when I was in the U.S. And they had been grinding. They came wow. here, talked to a couple of people. They're like, hey, you need to meet this person. You need to meet this person. Or come over here with me. And it's like, it's you're, you said the other day, we're magnetic people. And that's what happened. Yes, that's yes. That's what happened. And I love, because I have a question actually about, well, several things. One is, I noticed when we were out the other day, we were on the, you know, the deck enjoying conversation. Mm -hmm. And you guys were telling this, um, this is having a conversation, and you were really relaxed about all these beautiful opportunities that are blossoming for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, they are really at this slow pace. It's slow, very but, like, slow. You know, <laughs> but it's nothing it's like slow. how you guys were before. Like, no. It was very fast pace. Yeah. No. And I refuse, if it even begins to look like that, we will shut completely down. I'll, I'll, I will move it. out the way. I'm not doing yeah. it. Well, that's my, my question to you. So it feels like in the United States, you are trained 100%. for that need for speed. 100%. Okay. So now that you're here, what's the value in slowing down? My life. Mm. <laughs> for me, it's my life. Well, I, I would say, I would say the only, the only ben real benefit is that if you need to go that fast, you can't. Mm -hmm. You really can't. And, and there are times here that you, you it's to your advantage. Okay. Um, you get stuff done, you know, um, the way that you wanted to get it done. Where the South Africans are like, oh, you know, uh, you know, and, yeah. But then at some point, they kind of look at you as the as the person to get it done. And let me give you a quick example. We had a friend of ours. His name is Seppo, and um, he's he's starting a premium. Uh, uh, lounge lounge experience for people who are traveling and Shepo good guy South African proper South African brother and he had he was he he had this meeting that he had to go to and now he had to go talk to this white guy who kind of 
um, he needed to rent the space from 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 the from the uh, from the airport. And so he calls me. Now keep in mind that day, or was it that day? That day we were flying to the, back to Atlanta to do something, right? Jeffo calls me, and he said, "Mark, can you please, can you please, can you please come?" So I come there, and backstory is a lot of times a lot of South Africans are kind of in, in the business space are kind of um, very smart, but he was weary of dealing with this white person. He was nervous, flat out nervous. Yeah, okay. So uh, me and Tasha, we we've been through, we know what we're doing. I said, Shepard, what's the what's the plan? And he started talking to us, cut all that. Tell me what you want to do. What's the goal? What's the goal? Mm -hmm. He said it. I said, okay, don't say nothing. We got it. Oh wow. We didn't know anything, but we knew yeah. how to operate. Okay. And that and I and I think that's what we bring to the table mm -hmm. as as, as African Americans. Um, we bring that to the table because we can ramp it up if we need to. Mm -hmm. However, it's more comfortable not ramping it up. 100%. Yeah, well, I can, I can tell. That's, that's why I wanted to ask. Yeah, um, yeah because we preach that nobody wants to slow down. We just think that this physical effort is the way to go. And yeah. then before well, you know get left it, behind in the U.S. if you don't. Yeah. 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 And I'm just expressing to people, reminding people that, like, look, when you do, when you do, you can enjoy the scenery along the way to your goal. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's where the joy is, is, right? I mean, we try very hard to stay present in every moment. I mean, even even in the mornings when we wake up, it's not ah. like it's not like yeah. go go go. I mean, it probably takes us two mm, hours, hours. To, <laughs> about two hours to actually get past the let's go outside let's, let's sit do let's, let's just talk do about this. it <laughs> and then it's like okay then we'll get coffee and then a few hours that we may we'll try get another <laughs> cup of coffee like this morning i think we started moving around we got up early because we normally get up early but we didn't start like doing any work until like 12 30. Yeah, yeah that's, I like that. And we worked until about 4.30. Okay. So, but I, I got everything I needed to get done in four hours, and I was like, okay. And then I texted you, I was like, okay, we're going to get dressed now, mm -hmm. and we're on our way. But most days are like, I'm not going to wake up and start pounding. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I will, and I'll set goals for every day. I'm going to get this much done. If it doesn't get done, I will do it tomorrow. Like, I'm gonna, only going to work this much time because I've been in a space where I've worked from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And on the weekend, still putting back into a space that wasn't fulfilling anymore. So I won't do it again. But I will you know, not do it again. Funny, you know, most South Africans feel the way that we feel. I, well, I'm stupid. Let me back it up. Most, most of our people here feel the same way. Nobody killing themselves mm -hmm. over nothing. It's not. It's never not worth it. It's not. And um, if they don't have it, they're fine. Oh, okay. Because yeah, there's things that are more important, like you say, take it in the scenery. Our view is amazing. I like looking out my door. I like looking out my window. I like sitting by my pool. Um, I like a warm breeze. I like a cool breeze. I mean, but I'm going to take all of that and appreciate it too. Because I've been in places where we've gone on vacation and I've not even been able to enjoy it because I'm thinking about what I have to do next. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be that person anymore. And I don't have to be that person. Exactly. That's the thing. That Choices, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. And knowing you have a choice. That's really, that's really it. Knowing that's you have a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choices. That's what it comes down to. So before I wrap up, I have to say the best question for last. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, so this is a question. No, I'm only five for seven. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. For you, okay. about Mr. Mark Lynn. Mm -hmm. So He's five two. He's five three and a half. He's I'm five two. two. Oh really? Yeah, I'm about to yeah. Sure, it's okay. She's got heels on today though. Yeah. Today I'm five seven. Ah, I love <laughs> it. I love it. So we are cyclical beings, right? We, mm -hmm. We're supposed to cycle. We're supposed to change, um, and we kind of like try to stunt our growth by not allowing change to help mm -hmm. us grow. Mm -hmm. And so, with that being said, when since you've moved here, mm -hmm. what changes have you seen in Mark? Um. Mm -hmm. Besides the fact that his favorite word is, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> because, or he says, um, I don't have to. No. Mm. His favorite word has always been no, but now it's like, 
before you can finish your question, he doesn't even know it. He'll just say no. And I'm like, you don't even know I'm going to ask. He's like, I'm not doing it. Not, I, mean, no. I got to do something. And he I got to stop wanna, doing do what I'm doing, which is maybe doing nothing. But and to you, but it's, it's relaxing. Mm-hmm. I mean, answers his, the answers, I like that. his no is way more prominent. And like he said, he could be doing nothing. But if, were, if even if he's doing nothing is... Honestly, when I say doing, I'm talking like sitting, no TV, no phone, just nothing. If you say, "Hey, can you come here for a second? He's like, "No," because he's in that moment. Oh, he's taking it next level. No, yeah, because because he's in that moment, and he's. I said, "But you're I not. But you're not doing that." He goes, "I am doing something. I'm doing what I want to do right now." So his answer is no. His answer. His answer is no. <laughs> I love that. So I love that. So the change that was is that his no got more prominent, whereas before yeah. he was doing it because he had to, and he was mm-hmm. forcing himself. So now he doesn't force himself to do anything. So good. So Nothing. good. Nothing. That's really good. It's hilarious, actually. Really Even, good. But he's this no is a universal no. He does not care who you are, where you're from, what your relationship is with him. His no is universal. Anybody can get this no. <laughs> that's great because it just shows that, you know, you're connecting with your authentic self. Oh, yeah. You're tuned in, yeah. you know, with what Mark likes. And it's a reflection of you, too, your understanding. Dude. You know? I'll, 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 just, I'll just go do something else. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny because, like I said, you know, being here in South Africa, the option of being able to, like, they've been in the U.S. and in, in the D.C. metro area, the no comes with consequences. It comes with a lot of consequences. You know, and if you don't do something, then this is going to happen. So you just end up saying, okay, fine, let me do it. And then eventually you die, and then you know, nobody cares. <laughs> no, nobody I know, cares. right? And then nobody like, cares. You know, did, did he do that? We don't know. <laughs> nobody recorded. But here, it's not just the fact that you can just say no. It's just the fact that you start recognizing being here all the other opportunities that you just ignore, like sitting down poolside or drinking a drink mm-hmm. and just reflecting or doing absolutely nothing. That's a real thing. Most of us never do that. But when you do do it, you start it, it starts you start to get value in it. You know, you start and people start saying, but then you start thinking, well, it's important. It's part of, it's part of my life now, and I like it. And so I'm going to defend that. Um, and and I, fight for it. No, for real. It. I'm going to. I'm like, no, I'm no, I'm no. good. Because mm-hmm. I mean, we get a lot of um, requests. And, can you go here? Can you do that? Which is which is fine. I think when I mentioned to you, uh, maybe I shouldn't sit on the camera, but I said, make sure you let me know about today because we kind of yeah. had a. Because if you would have. If you yeah. didn't, I would have been like, he would have been right, right. yeah, and which it worked out great, mm-hmm. and and I even appreciate the fact that you said thank you. Yeah, I, I do. I, I I appreciate it. Yeah, because I'm like, you know what, dang, that was my time. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm truly grateful. No, I, I know you. I want to say, but you, but 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 again, you mentioned it to me before you came. Oh, I see. And I remember that, and I was like, okay, so let me, nonetheless. In front of you guys. No, it's all good. Okay. Um, all right, so now yes. it's your turn. You're in the hot seat. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. No. I like, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So about Natasha, what yeah. changes have you seen since you guys, you know, relocated and you've been here? This ought to be I will good. say from when we left, left, left Northern Virginia, D.C. metropolitan area to now, I think Tasha, it's funny now, think about it. Because she right. actually, no, she actually sees herself, uh-huh. she sees herself more. And so, in the past, she just would have blew off stuff, like, Cause, because I'm busy, I got to do stuff, okay. right? Outside of her, right? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it is. But she sees herself, and, and then, like, whatever she thinks she needs, she actually makes a space and time to, to acquire it, or to do it, or to be it. She, she does one of those things all the time. Try to, try to take, she tries to take care of herself a lot more. Um, just because, for one, um, I think it's available here. Um, for two, she doesn't blow it off like, nah, it's not for me. She's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, because I've seen her in the past just blow off things. Like self care. Yeah, yeah, it's just stuff that you just need to slow down yeah. and pay attention about yourself. You know, I mean, we've been four years. I mean, she's got four years older, and she's she, she's recognizing that. She's like, okay. I'm older. Yeah, maybe I need to do yeah. this. Maybe I need to, need to do that. And I do like that part. In the past, I promise you, she would have been like, I don't care because I got to go to work. 
I gotta go do this. Right. I gotta go do that. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta. Somebody wants me here. Everything that she talks about, there are people who talk about it openly, like Sangomas, and they they talk about it openly. It's like stuff that women, like holistic stuff. Yeah, stuff you that know, women talk about. Essential oils, candles, sage burning, like mm -hmm. all yeah. that type of Just like earthy stuff. stuff that's normal here. Yeah, um, yeah it's a lot about. easier to to get involved in stuff and to look for spaces where you can do that for yourself here than it was there. I mean, to be into it there, it's like, you don't go to church? Like, right. like, <laughs> like, like, it's here like, it's like you don't take care of yourself? Yeah, yeah, like, what is that? Um, so here it's a lot more, um, it's easier for me to just be who I probably already was. Yeah, I had exactly. to suppress that because of the environment that I was in. Well, I would say that because it's mainstream. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Because there's so many black women that are having the same <laughs> conversation yeah. it's mainstream in the states it's not mainstream it's yeah. it's, it's, it's fringe yeah those types of conversations mm -hmm. because the white women are occupying those spaces <laughs> i hate to say it that way that's just the way i see it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so well because we're supposed to be here yeah. no i think that's true <laughs> well <laughs> again i want to thank you guys for your time i again I really appreciate you sharing that you're getting to see another version of yourself mm -hmm. and also another version of your spouse guys yeah. hashtag relationship goals <laughs> <laughs> but the message here is really slow down you know the answers are in just shifting from that speed that speed mentality that we were trained into but that's okay we can take control of your life but you have a choice and slow down because that's the way to speed things up so thanks for tuning in to Inner Cosmetics. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Ooh.